and I spent 18 months trying to get the paperwork and everything to get the tax uh, ID credit numbers from the federal government and to get the nonprofit status from the state for the foundation <clears throat> with the goal of we would put on a seminar in Seattle and charge a fee and the doctors would come and then we'd take that money put it in the kitty and now we had some money for our residents and because of that we were able to start generating funds and we could send our residents to other places that were doing things we weren't doing and so the early residents with me uh, were able to go places and do things that they normally wouldn't have been able to do because they couldn't afford it and the hospital wouldn't pay for it. But the foundation now had funds. And so now we've got a resident who we're training and we're teaching them, trying to make them better, but we could make them even better by sending them to Germany for a month or send them to San Francisco to do plastic surgery rotations. And uh, so that part of it to me meant that we accelerated their potential of learning way beyond what it could have been or should have been. The second part of that is I feel really privileged that during the time that I was residency director and assistant director it was eight years. Uh, every year we had two residents and if you look at the list of the residents that trained during that time with me they are almost uniformly the top leaders in the profession right now. They are the guys that are teaching. They're the guys that are doing the really new exciting surgeries. They're writing books and, and I feel so privileged that I had a part in getting them there by offering them the opportunity financially to go to some of these meetings and teaching them what I knew. Uh, one, of those res one of those past residents one day <clears throat> was on the podium just before me and he got up and said, I wanted to introduce uh, my past residency director, and he taught me everything I know. And then I got up and said, he was wrong. He was dead wrong. I taught him everything I knew, not everything he knows, because he learned from all these other guys, too. So when he left, he was much more educated than me. So he, he misstated it. It's not, I didn't teach him everything he knows. I taught him everything I knew. And that's the way I feel. I feel these guys took the little bit I offered, but they took some from everybody else, and they took some from these places we sent them. And then with their own abilities, they, they went sky high. I mean, they're, they're just some of the best teachers in the world right now. And on top of all of that, you started the Yucatan Children's Project, correct? I got involved right away in the early stages, but it was... It was started by um, Charles Sutherland, podiatrist out of Barry University. And he was the one that saw the need uh, because of the, uh, and I can't remember the name of the uh, hurricane that kind of wiped out the Yucatan Peninsula way back when, 15 years ago or so. And so he went down and looked at all these poor children down there and how many foot problems they had and, and he through the Barry University started this project. And the reason I got involved is one of the professors there, Dr. Kashuk, uh, was in the first group that went down to the Yucatan and Dr. Kashuk and I were both serving on the board of directors of the American College of Foot and Ankle Surgeons. So we were friends and we got to chat a lot and he told me about this project. And it had been like once or twice. And I wanted to know if I wanted to go down. I was like, yeah, I'd like to go down. So I went down and saw what was happening. All these little kids with severe foot and ankle problems and club feet and all kinds of things we don't get to see much in the United States because of health care is better, prenatal care is better. Um, and so I said to Dr. Sutherland, is it okay if I come back again? He said, sure, we'd like to have the help. So I went back two more times and then decided that we really needed to make residents do this too. And so I started bringing residents. Uh, again, we, we used our power through the Northwest Podiatric Foundation to generate funds by having good seminars. Then the money we could use to buy supplies and send residents down there and uh, you know all the doctors volunteer their time and I got Dr. Hutchinson involved 
um, after I'd been down for about two years. And so now we're into our 13th year of going down there every year. And we go down twice a year and do a lot of club foot surgery and now casting, Ponsetti casting. And, uh, you know, the techniques have improved so much we can, we can cure a lot of these kids of these severe deformities so that they could never walk. And then in addition, you were on the board of podiatric surgery. You influenced the way surgery is practiced today. Yeah, I was very involved all those years. Seven years I sat on the board in American College of Foot and Ankle Surgery. And, uh, you know, I've always had jobs. I've always had committee things with American College of uh, Foot and Ankle Surgeons with, uh, you know, I've been involved in APMA things, trying to be educational part of it. And I've always felt it was part of my duty to kind of pay back and, and help in these processes and sit on these committees and you know it's kind of a it's almost a thankless job most of the time uh, because most practicing doctors have no clue how all of these groups influence their practice and insurance reimbursement and the advancement of the profession in the other medical eyes and uh, I think if more people went to those kinds of things and got involved it'd be even better so how has podiatry changed from the time you entered it to today? It's unbelievable. It's, uh, it's not even, even uh, describable almost. Um, the, the training before me was pretty much nil. Most people went into practice. And there were some that got to spend time with established practitioners. During my era, in the 70s, there were one-year residencies and, and a couple of two-year residencies. Uh, almost all of them were bunions and hammer toes and basic foot clinic stuff, and that was it. That's all you got. But if you did a one-year residency, if you had one of the top programs, you only did six months of training in foot surgery because it was surgery and then a rotation like radiology. Surgery, a rotation like anesthesia, surgery, a rotation like dermatology, and on and on and on. So when you got out, you had kind of a six months of internship and six months of surgery. Um, it's almost rare now that our graduates don't have two full years of surgery or three or four or five years of residency. Um, and it's almost rare now to find a residency that's only teaching bunions or only teaching hammer toes. They're, they're teaching wound care, they're teaching diabetic uh, issues, how to deal with patients medically, uh, leg lengthening uh, frames, screws and plates and gadgets that were unknown when I started. They weren't even available. And so now they have bigger rotations with world-renowned orthopedist and plastic surgery rotations and traveling the world to get additional training, equipment, tools. Uh, it's an exciting time and it's not even close to being done. The generation that's graduating this weekend from our residency program after three years, three years of training and they've been all over the world training. They've done AO fellowships in Europe. They've been to multiple big centers when they're sitting in a chair like this after 30 years, they're going to be talking about stuff that they could never, ever imagine. So my next question is, where do you see podiatry going in the future? I know you're semi-retired, but uh, I don't think we've heard the last from Doc Dockery. So what can we expect from Dr. Gary Dockery in the future? I hope to kind of stay active as long as the health hangs in there and, and try to keep teaching and working with residents, I really enjoy working with residents and showing them it's, it's not about the money. It's not about just uh, having fun in surgery. It's about getting good results and making patients better. Um, I think that what's happening now is a lot of our graduates are going into multi-specialty uh, groups or they're going into large uh, orthopedic groups and becoming the foot and ankle specialists in that group. Uh, many of the graduates across the country are not going into private practice by themselves, which was the 99% of the norm when I was a graduate. Everybody went into private practice. And you might have a partner, but that was about it. They're not going into big MD groups or multi-specialty groups or orthopedic groups, but now they are. Um, I see that as kind of 
where it's going.